Good morning. What does Paul mean when he asks the Thessalonians to be comforted by these things? Well, these past couple of mornings, we've gone through 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 13 through 17, and today 18. Here's what 18 says. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. So we're looking at what does he mean by that? And he's talking about, of course, the section we've just studied. What would, does that amount to? Well, again, back at the beginning, he says, I don't want you to be ignorant about the people who've died. He says, we have a different hope. In 14, he says, if we believe that Jesus died and rose again. So we have to believe that Jesus died and rose again. And then the rest of this is about, as we've seen the last couple of mornings, about how it is that Jesus brings us out of the grave, how it is that we are resurrected and then go to meet with him in the sky forevermore to be with him. So this is the formula that Paul has for us to comfort another person who's mourning over the loss of a, a loved one who has died. This is the picture. This is the answer. Uh, this is how you do it, says Paul. So the best antidote for sorrow, the best way to have hope, is to look at that Jesus died on the cross for us, and he's coming back for us. The second coming, literally the the second coming of Jesus. Now, I know there's another viewpoint that, that people have. When the person dies, that there's an immaterial, ethereal soul that goes floating out, and suddenly it's super conscious. It's no longer enshackled by the body. And uh, so now he can go out and do whatever, I guess, ethereal spirits do while he's waiting, because at the end he'll have to come back and be encumbered again by, by the body. Uh, when the resurrection day comes. That is not what the Bible teaches. Remember that the Bible says in first, for example, in 1 Timothy 6.16 6, that only God is immortal. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it also talks about death, uh, God bringing immortality to us. Immortality is a gift for the believer. It is not something we have innately. We are not naturally immortal. It's not that once you are created, you always have immortality. So we should comfort each other with this fact that God designed us this way. You know, this idea got blended into Christianity about the immortal soul uh, being something that's innate to us from this Greek idea that the ultimate thing, the good thing is the idea, that's the real thing. The real chair is the, the idea of a chair. The false chair, the one you're sitting on, that isn't a real chair. And everything material is less. Everything material is sort of bad or evil. Everything immaterial and uh, an idea that is good. And so that idea comes and in, in, it, it messes up Christianity. When God made the world, what did he say at the end of Genesis 1? He looked at everything he had made, the blueberries he had made, the mangoes, uh, the apples he had made, and all the different fruits and animals and the people. And he said, this is tov ma'od, this is very good. And so God's analysis of his creation is not that, well, this is evil, and we have to get everybody, kind of extract them from this evil physicality. No, the, the things, the physical, material things are actually good in Christianity. Greek philosophy said material things are bad. So that's a piece of where I think we get some of this uh, other viewpoint. But that's not a Bible viewpoint. We want to follow the scriptures on this point. So let's pray together and as we think about this. Dear Father in heaven, Many people, uh, everybody who could potentially even click on this message and view it, uh, has suffered loss of a friend or a loved one or will. And so, Lord, this is a serious thing that, that Paul tells us how we can comfort one another when there's a, a death, a, a sorrowful time when someone we love dies. So we want to have a Bible hope, and we thank you for delivering the Bible truth about what happens when people die, what happens in the resurrection, as we've looked at these last couple of days. Please bless us, help us to take courage in the thing that you give us for hope, not as the world, but as the believer, Lord, help us to have that hope. We thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. So as we mentioned a few mornings ago, our understanding is different, our worldview is different, and so... We have a different approach to this. And what we can say when somebody dies, who dies in the Lord Jesus, they, we will see them again. They'll be resurrected. Jesus will bring them up. And we can say, Hallelujah. Lord, even so, come soon. And on that thought, you have a wonderful day serving the Lord Jesus Christ.